Ah, your return. Is there more to report to me, mademoiselle? And that is everything I have discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Now, let us see what we can learn. I believe I've compared the footprint cast to all the men's shoes. Unfortunately, I do not think so, mademoiselle. Be pleased to make certain next time. The footprints in the snow belong to Foscarelli. And his fingerprints are found upon the windowsill of Monsieur Ratchet's room. Yet he does not smoke a pipe. Nor, I think, does the cambric handkerchief with the letter H belong to him. The stiletto I found in the hut must be the murder weapon. That would seem to be the obvious conclusion. No, it is the weapon of the underworld assassin, to be sure. And with fingerprints which match no one. Statue is another motive for murder. Why not? We have the possible revenge from the Armstrong kidnapping, a possible assassin from Ratchet's underworld past. So why not a thief who kills Ratchet to cover up his crime? If we find nine more motives for the murder and ten more knives, we at least will have explained all those stab wounds. We have not one, but two additional attendants' uniforms. Two uniforms, two knives, possibly two murderers, one right-handed and one left? Can they have had the same plan, to sneak about disguised as attendants, in order to murder Monsieur Ratchet in his sleep? What a moment that must have been, as they encounter one another over the body. It is like a scene from a Marx Brothers movie, that. Someone was hiding in Ratchet's crate. A valuable statue is stolen. And then the thief decides to do what? what? Masquerade as the statue? To escape detection? The books in Ratchet's crate were all references of use to the murderer. Explain, mademoiselle. Geographie Europeenne would be helpful in following the route of the train and choosing the best spot for murder. Introduction a la science could give information about sleeping drafts. And crime a punition by Dostoevsky? Was the guilty conscience of the killer haunting him as it did the unfortunate Rashkolnikov? Mateo's fingerprints are on the padlock from the door of the hut. That padlock interests me. Why would Matteo have a key to a shepherd's hut in the middle of the mountains, near the spot where he would have no idea the train would be stopped by an avalanche? Monsieur Poirot, you don't think the avalanche was caused deliberately? No, mademoiselle, I do not. There are enough fantastic elements to this crime already, without introducing the saboteurs. But then how could his fingerprints come to be on that hut? They were not on the hut, but on the padlock. Further investigation appears necessary on this point. The simplest course of action would be to ask Matteo how they came to be there. The padlock was taken when Matteo's ham radio equipment was sabotaged. Someone has gone to great trouble, it seems, to direct suspicion upon this young man. Yet how can he have reached the Calais coach unobserved? I have all the pieces. All that remains is for me to assemble them properly. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. And so we advance in our investigations. It is obvious that our fellow passengers have not been entirely forthright. I would suggest questioning them all again. Confront them with evidence you have uncovered, compare the alibis, and study your timetable. You have still not had the opportunity to search all of the compartments. Revisit those you have already searched as well. The situation about this train changes from moment to moment. Leave nothing to chance. And there are other mysteries still to be explained, such as the identity of the occupant of Monsieur Ratchet's crate. Is he the attendant the engineer saw board the train with Michel? A man small and dark? <laughs>